We know that going to a restaurant or the movies alone can be a great way to spend time with yourself. I like to do that. But what about packing up and going on vacation solo? For some of us, that is a jump and a stretch. So Shakima Smith, a solo travel enthusiast, is here to tell today to tell us how she's traveled to 82 countries alone with confidence. So give her some love, Shakima. I dream of it. I think it would be fantastic. So I love that we're talking about it right now. So how did this journey to travel solo start for you? So I had a really bad experience on a girl's trip and I decided, you know what? All of my other friends really don't have the money to be able to travel or they just don't have that flexibility with their personal obligations. Uh -huh. So I just decided to take my first solo trip ever and country one turned into country 82. Oh my goodness, 82 countries. Sometimes it's really hard to get the group uh, girls trip out of the chat and into reality. Yes. And I was saying to the audience, like, don't wait. Yeah. Don't wait. Sometimes you don't wait, you, you know, or you're going to be waiting forever. So what do I think when I think traveling alone? I think safety. Right. You know, especially as a solo woman. So that is sort of the number one concern that women travelers have. What are your tips for being safe on solo trips? So my number one tip that has got me to 82 countries safely is just by registering with the Canadian Embassy. Most people don't know that the Canadian Embassy, you can actually email them your itinerary. So that way the Canadian Embassy knows where you are, what hotel you're staying, where you'll be eating, who was your driver, what flight. Oh. And so it's kind of hard for you to go on a trip and for someone to say that they never saw you again. The Canadian Embassy has literally every single move that you were going to make. And if there's like a huge thing that happens, like say a pandemic, the yes. embassy can find you. Yes. So on March 16th, 2020, I was on a solo trip in Panama. I got a weird number, a call from a weird number. I answered. It was actually the U.S. Embassy yeah. in Panama calling me to tell me borders will be closing in 17 hours. We have you down listed as an American in this country right now. Get to the airport in 17 hours. Borders will close. Oh, my goodness. If I had not given them my itinerary, they would have never known that I was there to contact me in the first place. Oh, my gosh. That's such a good tip. I yeah. love that. Okay, what is your next safety tip for us? So another thing that I definitely recommend is upon check into your hotel, just ask the front desk staff, hey, what are the local scams that I should be aware of? Mm. So for instance, when I was in Rio, Brazil, I checked into my hotel, I asked them, what are the local scams? Mm -hmm. And they said, you know what, when you leave, a child on the street will beg you for a dollar. They'll probably look poor, and mm -hmm. children t tend to disarm people's emotions, their, de their defenses. You're a kid, you want something? Take right, it. Take it. Right. And so they said, if a child asks you for a dollar, an adult is going to run up behind you and grab your entire wallet. So oh. they are actually incorporating children in on the scams. Mm -hmm. So if any child asks you for a dollar when you step out of this hotel, tell them no. Mm. So for the rest of my time in Rio, Children were asking for money, and I was like, no, I can't. Oh, I'd be like, I'm sorry, no! I know, Please, no, I know, I, I know, I That's felt really bad. tough. You do have to protect yourself, yeah, but that it's good to know. Yeah. So you actually have some tools that you take with you whenever you go away, and these help ensure your safety as well. What have you brought here? Yeah, so the first thing that I have is a, a money belt. I actually put this on, and I put it on underneath my jeans, yeah. and I put my phone in it, some cash in it, just so that way I'm never pickpocketed mm -hmm. because my money is actually underneath my jeans yeah the, it's flat right it's so you can flat. put that on underneath your skirt underneath right. your jeans no one's gonna see it absolutely mm -hmm. the second thing that i have is a door jammer this is actually essential for me because i put it underneath the door to make sure no one can actually open the door to my hotel room you'd be surprised if someone in the front desk actually gives somebody a key to your room by mistake or just if anything oh. happens so just make sure that no one can get into your room either way. Yeah. I've seen so many um, instances on social media, I, I don't know whether to believe it or not, but uh, about how easy it is to get into a hotel room. I tested it. You tested it. I went to the front desk of my hotel and I said, can I get a, a, a key to room 217? And they said yes. <gasps> and it wasn't your room. 217 wasn't even my room. I just wanted to try it. Oh, my gosh. Okay, bring the door jam with you. Bring then. the door jammer. Okay, bring good the door to jammer. know. What is the orange uh, thing you got in the middle there? Uh, so this is actually a mobile Wi-Fi wi hotspot. Okay. So let's say you're traveling around and you leave your hotel where you have the Wi-Fi. Yeah. At least you know you can still use maps, you can still use WhatsApp, because you're still actually connected to Wi-Fi despite leaving the hotel. Did not even know that existed. That is so <laughs> smart. Yeah. Okay, and this here is a camera? 
This is actually my prized possession for solo <laughs> travel. Okay. So typically when you go to your hotel room or if you're staying at an Airbnb, I always make sure that I plug up my hotel camera, I prop it facing the door. Mm -hmm. It actually gives you notifications to your phone that you can see in real time. Mm. So let's say you check out of your hotel room and you're on an excursion, but the housekeeping comes in twice. The second time they have no, no cleaning supplies. What's mm -hmm. up with that? Mm -hmm. Or let's say you're staying at an Airbnb and you notice that the host actually came into the property. Mm -hmm. So you actually have this in real time. Yes, we've had that incident at, uh, at a, an Airbnb. I don't even know if it's Airbnb or a different company, but the host kept coming back. Yeah. And the only reason we knew was because things were shuffled around every time we came back. So... I don't know what was happening, but it would be nice to know if you had yeah, a camera, right? Absolutely. Um, and then we've got this here. That's an air tag. Yes. So yeah. the air tag for me is dual purpose. So the first purpose is always to just track my luggage and make sure that I know where my luggage is. Yeah. But another thing that I do is I pop an air tag in my shoe. So that way, if I lose my phone or if anything happens, my parents are actually still tracking me in real time as well. And with this hotel mm. camera, it has two way audio. Yeah. So my parents get the alerts if I'm opening the door for let's say room service my parents can literally see everything that's happening in this hotel room that's so that's i mean that's great but that's also really sweet <laughs> like i always see people landing and they're full-grown adults and they're texting their mom and i get it yeah my mom will call Probably the embassy now yes she, yes. she will, oh, yes. She will. <laughs> yes she will okay you say that a great way to get more countries under your belt is actually to cluster travel. What does that mean? How does that work? Yes. Yeah, so in 2018, I actually visited 34 countries in that year. Whoa. So yeah. So what I do is let's say you intend to go to Paris, you pull out a map and you look at other countries that pique your interest. Yeah. So if you go to Paris and you see that London is nearby, well, when is it ever going to be 45 minutes and $50 to get to London again? We're going to go while we're over here. It doesn't yes. make sense to spend the money to go to Paris and then come back the following summer to go to London. We're already 45 minutes and $50 away. So we're going to go while we're here. Got it. Mm -hmm. So stack those countries up. Yep. You've been seeing some really beautiful uh, photos throughout the segment yes. uh, that you've been able to get on vacation. And this beautiful book has so many more of them. So getting great photos on your trip is definitely a thing. And so many people want that. <laughs> I'm showing you all the wrong pictures here. <laughs> Just look at this one. Okay. <laughs> so how do you go about doing that? We're like, who's following you? Is this the paparazzi? How are you getting this done? No. So actually, I utilize Airbnb. And instead of selecting stays, I select the tab that says experiences. Okay. So this is how I'm able to get a photographer in every single country that I visit. That is so smart. So, and I didn't know that they had experiences on their list. So you, and one of the experiences, photography. Absolutely. And you can hire a photographer that way wherever you go. Absolutely. Shakima actually put together this whole little book, um, yes. which we're, we're going to link to through our Shop the Show. So this has all the info that she's racked up over the years of her solo travel. And it's the sort of thing that it's like short and sweet, but you're going to get everything you need. So good on you for that. I got to ask you this. When you are on vacation, do you give yourself a curfew and... <laughs> Are there things that you don't tell people when you're out and about? Like, are you are you specific about what to say and what not to say? Yeah, so I definitely do give myself a curfew just mm -hmm. because I'm a female solo traveler. So around 10 o'clock, I'm like, okay, let me just go back to my room. Absolutely. And the beautiful thing about solo travel is that you can enjoy, but everyone doesn't have to know. So yeah. if I get into a taxi, they'll say, oh, are you alone? And I'm thinking, you just picked me up from my hotel. Of course, I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> you already know where to find me. So yes. they say, oh, are you alone? And I say, oh, my sister's upstairs. She just got in. She's jet lagged. I'm going to do this excursion by myself. Right. My five husbands who are police officers <laughs> are up there and I'm just going exactly. to get some milk and I'm coming back. Exactly. To my five husbands. Yep, exactly. All cops. Uh, yeah. yeah. All of them. Thank you so much for that information. Did we not learn a lot from Shakima? That was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you.